Um, so I'm Frank, um, and today I want to talk about refinement types in Scala uh, with Refind. Refind is a library I started working on a year ago, and it's um, for making existing types more precise. So before I want to begin, I want to mention that um, this talk uh, contains some code examples, and these are uh, compiled with Toot, and that are the required imports. Uh, Toot is an awesome SPT plugin by Rob Norris uh, for type check documentation, and so my talk hopefully only contains intentional errors. <laughs> okay, so um, Refind is for making existing types uh, more precise. And I like this uh, tweet by Ken Scambler a lot um, because it points out that we often use types that represent more values than are really um, useful or um, yeah, useful in our domain. Um, and normally, uh, we don't expect the complete works of Shakespeare as valid input when we're using string uh, in our program. So what's the problem with string? Um, a string has no meaning in our domain, and it can contain anything. So it could be a file path, it could be a JSON document, Scala file, um, basically anything. Um, it's just um, a sequence of characters of arbitrary length. And um, in an ideal world, we uh, would use string only at the uh, boundary of our programs uh, when we are doing I.O. Um, but reality is that we use string um, much too often because it's so convenient. Um, for example, here's a config class which has an URL and a git hash uh, field in both of type strings. And if we do the first line, that's probably okay. Uh, the second uh, looks weird, it's probably a bug. But the compiler won't help us here, um, and we are on our own. Okay, we can now add more uh, safety to our program if we introduce simple wrapper classes um, for these strings that just gives um, these parameter distinct types. So here, um, a URL and git hash um, value class that just uh, wraps the string and we use it in, uh, in the config class. And now this line here doesn't compile anymore. This will give us uh, a compilation error because um, yeah, the git hash is not a URL. We, we've mixed the parameters. Um, but these classes still wrap arbitrary, arbitrary um, strings. So um, we can still put a, um, a git hash into a URL or vice versa. And this is, uh, or will um, also lead to, to a bug. Okay, so we want to have some way um, to restrict the um, values we can put in our wrapper classes. Because not all values of the type um, are valid um, values of of our wrapper classes. And one way of doing this is known as uh, smart constructors, where we are um, basically hiding the primary constructor and just expose um, uh, the, the smart constructor that is able to um, produce um, um, our values. So here we have git hash as a smart constructor. There's this uh, from string uh, method, this, uh, which takes a string and gives us back an option of git hash and has internally a predicate is git hash that um, checks is our, or if the given string is actually uh, a valid git, ha git hash. So it should be between uh, four and 40 characters long and um, only contain uh, hex digits. And if that's the case, we uh, give back um, the string wrapped in git hash and wrapped in sum and otherwise none. Uh, this is how um, that looks like uh, at, the, at the usage side. Um, if we pass uh, a valid git hash to from string, we get back some git hash. If the string is invalid, we get back a none. Um, this is cool. We can uh, now only uh, create valid git hash instances. Um, and if we try, or if we try to use a constructor directly, um, the compiler will, uh, yeah. Um, does not allow that. Okay, so that's nice, but it also has downsides. And one th uh, downside is that 
um, if we have literals in our code, they're always wrapped in an option. So we can't, we know if we look at the code, yes, this is a valid git hash, but it still is wrapped in an option. But just calling get uh, on that option um, is still an unsafe operation because if someone uh, changes the literal or changes the validation mechanism, um, this will lead to an um, exception at runtime. And the other thing is, yeah, validation always happens at runtime, also for, for these literals. Um, although we could do it at compile time. We know at compile time that uh, these things are, are valid uh, literals. Okay, so uh, Ali, we, um, what, are, what do we want to have? Um, it would be nice to somehow have the safety of the smart constructors um, with the convenience when using literals. And I'll try to show you now that, when, uh, that we can have um, both with refinement types in refined. Okay, um, so before we go into the library, um, I just want to um, show you the basic idea of refinement types. So a refinement type is just some base type plus the predicate. And then we demand that all values of the refinement types are the values of the base type that satisfies um, or that satisfy the predicate. One example is um, here an int um, with, uh, with the predicate greater zero or a string um, that only contains hex digits. Okay, there's another aspect of um, refinement types, and that is refinement subtyping. So uh, because a refinement only makes a set of possible values of a type smaller, we have uh, some natural subtyping relations. Um, so um, a refined type is always a subtype of the base type. An int that is greater than zero is still an int. Um, and the second one is a little bit more complicated. It says that if we are one refined type is the subtype of another refined type, if all values of the first type also satisfy the predicate of the second type. Examples for that um, um, here in int um, gre greater 20 is a subtype of, of an int greater 10. So because all values greater 20 are also um, greater 10. Or um, the other example, um, says that an int that satisfies both predicates A and B, um, that is a subtype of an int that only satisfies A. So we can say um, we have these subtyping relations um, if one predicate logically implies the other. Okay, so much um, for the theory. Um, there's still one more concept before I go into refined and that are literal-based singleton types. So a singleton type is a type with only one inhabitant. Um, and literal-based singleton types are basically literals at the type level. Um, and unfortunately, um, the value of that uh, type is then the, the literal, uh, the value of that literal. Um, unfortunately, Scala has no way to uh, or has no syntax to, to express uh, literal-based singleton types directly. So we have to use um, shapeless for that. So shapeless witness um, does that for us, which is abbreviated as W um, in the library. And here we have an example of, of literal-based um, singleton types. Um, we have this variable X, um, which has the type ABC, and we can assign it the value ABC, and that works. And if we try to assign another value, x, y, z, um, we get a type mismatch because the compiler expected um, a value of type ABC, but we provided a value of type x, y, z. And um, we use um, literal based singleton types in refined a lot um, as a way to put values in our predicates. Um, we'll see an example um, soon. And by the way, there's currently um, a SIP about bringing a syntax for little base singleton types into Scala, and it's of course already implemented in Dotty. 
Okay, we now have everything in place to define our first uh, refine type with the library. Um, I'm defining here the git hash, or a git hash refine type, and I, for comparison, this is just the predicate um, we used in the uh, smart constructor, and it's on the value level. Okay, so git hash uh, looks quite lengthy, so let's uh, take a closer look at that. Um, we have a string, refined, and then a predicate. So string is a base type of our um, refined type. Refined itself is, um, or has the purpose of attaching the type level predicate to the base type. So it's uh, just defined as a case class with two type parameters and, and one field of, um, for the ba uh, value of the base type. And because uh, it's um, a binary type constructor, we can write it infix here between string and the predicate. Uh, and the predicate um, itself is not, uh, not just a single um, predicate, but composed of many different others. So uh, we have um, here the, the second line, um, the size predicate, which demands that our string must be between 4 and 40 characters long. And the, the uh, third line says um, that all digits must be, uh, all um, characters must be hex digits. And then we com can compose uh, these two predicates with um, and to get our full pre um, predicate. And this is everything we need to do to, uh, we need to define ourselves to use git hash um, with the library. Okay, so how does, uh, how can we use that now? Um, we can use it uh, to de uh, refine uh, values at compile time. So if we have, um, for example, a string literal and ascribe uh, the type git hash to that, this will uh, then lead in, uh, um, will invoke a macro that checks that our literal uh, actually um, satisfies the predicate. And if we ascribe the type uh, to a literal, um, which is in invalid, um, we get a compile time error, um, which says which part of um, our predicate failed. And the, the nice thing here um, is uh, all the validation uh, happens at compile time, and there's um, no runtime component for, for the validation. But of course, we and uh, do not only want to uh, refine um, static values, um, we also want to have some more values that are not known um, at uh, compile time. I want to, to refine them. Um, here, for example, we um, have this uh, head string, which uh, just gives us the um, head commit hash uh, from the git command line client. And we can use this apply ref um, function here. We get, uh, give it uh, the git hash type and, and the head and get back either a string or a git hash. Um, in this example, we get a git hash on the right. And if we supply um, a string that is not a valid uh, git hash, we get um, an error message on the left. And this is how refinement looks um, at runtime. So how does that um, work actually? Um, so we have, um, or somehow have these uh, type level predicates, um, or have types uh, that are um, yeah, interpreted as predicates, and we have to somehow link that um, to value pre um, level predicates. And this is actually the, um, the definition of the, the letter predicate, which checks if a character is a letter. Um, the predicate itself is just an empty class, and then there's um, a validate type class, which links um, a value level predicate to the type level um, predicate. Um, and this is here the, the letter validate. And then we can also comp um, define predicates which take other predicates um, as, as parameters and compose them. So for example, here, this exists predicate um, just checks if um, 
at least one element in, in a collection um, satisfies P, and we can just define it as not for all, not P. So this is a complete definition of, of this uh, predicate in the library. And then for runtime validation, we just use the um, validate instance. And um, for compile time validation, we actually validate the, or there's a macro that validates, um, sorry, that evaluates the validate instances and uses them for checking literals. Okay, um, the library also implements refinement subtyping. Um, and Here's one example how that looks like. We have an uh, X, which is an in greater five, assigned at the value 100. Um, and then we have an uh, Y uh, of a different type, in greater zero. And when, uh, we can just assign X to Y, and this works, although um, these two types are different types for the type checker. Um, if, you true, or if you try to... Um, assign x to, to um, a variable with type in um, greater 10. We get a type mismatch. Um, we, um, the error is that the predicate greater 5 does not imply the gra uh, predicate greater 10. And this, uh, or this um, type mismatch error comes from the library, actually. So how does that work? This is also type class based. Um, there's an inference type class in the library that specifies if uh, one refined type is a subtype of another. And here's an example for um, the in inference for greater, um, where we uh, get the um, values of um, the literal singleton types um, of the greater predicates and compare these two. And we say the, the um, uh, inference is valid if uh, the first value is greater than the second. And then um, we have, some, uh, or have an implicit macro uh, which tries to convert between um, the, uh, or, or tr yeah, rewrites or converts T refined P uh, to T refined Q if it finds a valid inference. Okay, um, now I would like to go um, over the predicates that are um, predefined in the library. Um, we have already seen some logical predicates uh, like not, and, and or, oxor. Um, there are also variants of these which take um, an H list of predicates like all of, any of, or one of. Um, then there are, there are uh, character predicates um, digit, letter, lowercase, uppercase, uh, white space. <coughs> um, there are a lot of collection predicates. We've already seen uh, for all and exists. There's empty, non-empty, um, size, min size, max size. And um, the collection predicates also can be used um, for strings by treating the string as uh, a collection of characters. And there are numeric predicates, um, like less, less equal, greater, greater equal, um, and these interval predicates. And the interesting bit here is that only two of them are actually um, not defined as type aliases. So most of them are just type aliases um, for, um, of, of other predicates. So for example, interval closed is just an alias for uh, not less and not greater. Then there are string predicates um, like ends with or start with, um, where we can give a type level string, um, and, and these check if, if our strings actually uh, start or end with, this, with these strings. Um, there's a matches regex predicate, um, which can check if our strings match a given uh, regular expression. Um, there's regex, which checks if our string is actually um, a regular expression. Yeah, and so on. Okay, um, Refind is also integrated with other libraries. 
Um, there's, uh, for example, um, or there are modules for um, Argonaut and, and Circe by Alexandre, um, which allows to use refined types um, for JSON uh, serialization and deserialization. Then there's the uh, Monocle refined um, module by Julian, um, which provides a type safe way um, of uh, lens bit lensing into primitive types. For example, uh, this module uh, defines um, a long bit or long bits type, which is uh, just an int between um, 0 and, and 63. Um, the library itself um, provides a, a scalar check integration, so we have arbitrary instances uh, for refined types. And um, a codec um, module, which is basically the same as uh, Argonaut and Circe uh, modules, but for binary serialization. And there are two um, other libraries, libraries which are currently a uh, work in progress. One is integration um, with Doobie, a purely functional uh, JDBC layer. Um, this is by Kevin Horlick. And there's also Lib Isabel Refined, uh, which is um, a library which, uh, which uses um, the, the Isabel theorem prover under the hood for the refinement checking. This is by Lars. <laughs> okay, so to summarize, um, we can restrict the possible values of a type uh, with smart constructors and with refinement types. Um, and a refinement type is defined as just a base type um, plus a predicate. And refined is a simple implementation of refinement types in Scala. That's it. Questions? So you had uh, XML up there as a valid refinement type. Um, and it said valid XML. Does it really mean valid, or does it mean well-formed? <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> what it does under the hood is that it uh, um, tries to, to put the, um, the string into the uh, Scala XML um, LM constructor, I think. And if that doesn't um, produce an exception, that is valid. And that's well formed. So it's well formed. Produce. Mostly well formed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, given, given that this, like, lib is about refined, Fox out to uh, Fox out to Isabel to check some inference. I don't think it's such a stretch to uh, to fork out an HTTP request to get the schema and uh, check the. <laughs> <laughs> so something that occurred to me while um, just kind of looking at the syntax. I mean, it's it's really really cool, right? But um, something that occurred to me while looking at the syntax is that um, doing all of this in terms of sort of type aliases and, and sort of encoding the syntax of, of a refinement in actual types is, is somewhat annoying. Um, obviously, you need it at the type level, but the, the syntax is a pain. Um, do, has it uh, sort of, um, have, you, have you tried um, using the same sort of dynamic composed with macros trick that Witness uses to actually have sort of arbitrary syntax that you just parse uh, in a macro to, to represent refinements? Uh, yes, I have done that. Um, so. There, there's this, uh, another predicate which is um, called eval, which just takes a, a type level string where you can just put any Scala expression into. And this is then um, at compile term passed and um, evaluated and um, so forth to do the refinement um, checking. But um, the thing is, um, if you have, for example, two um, predicates that, that are basically the same but have um, use a uh, different identifier, so you have an int that is greater than zero, but um, one refinement says it's an x greater zero, and the other says it's an i greater zero. Um, th these are different types for for the library. I, I can't do um, check if those. Um, trees are actually identical or, or mean the same, um, the, the same refinement. So I can't do many interesting things about. Well, about something that. I was thinking was you could go, um, you could actually go even sort of further down this rabbit hole by having your own refinement language that you're parsing, 
Ra so rather than using Scala to like represent what that that's cool and terrifying, but like <laughs> the um, um, actually having your own so so being able to express things like for all a dot you know for, for a less than thing like literally the, the sort of comment DSL that you were expressing on the slides like that's that's a good DSL you could you could actually do that um, and parse it at the type level and that could in theory because it's a more restricted tree than like all of Scala's AST, you, you could in theory do some more equivalence test, uh, testing. And this is basically how, how uh, libisabel refined um, does that because it doesn't take, well, it's the same as this eval thing, but doesn't um, use a Scala as, as a language, but um, this uh, Isabel and yeah, so it, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's actually what he said. So um, I'm taking the expression language of, of Isabel and embedding there. But it's still kind of annoying because you have to embed those in, like, in type-level strings. And one idea could be possibly to encode this like, in, in, in type, uh, it, like just in traits. So you have like, a trait which is called for all, and you have a trait which is called, and then kind of like implicitly build a string together. But like, I'm not sure what is the better solution here. This is a lot of manual work, right? Yeah. You have um, to define then. Um, these things are still yourself and uh, somehow translate that to, to um, the Isabel language. So what I'm saying is we really need SIP, uh, SIP 23. Yeah. <laughs> More questions? Um, do refinement types work with implicit conversions? So if you have a refined string, um, do sort of string ops methods, are those available? Um, so so you, you want to do operations on the refined string, and after that operation, you want that the refinement is still there? Well, or? for starters, it say no. I'm fine with it. Every okay, yeah, that string. works. Okay. It, you can just unwrap um, the string from, from the refined class, and then, then do your operations on it. Oh, you have to unwrap it, okay. Yes. Just curious if there are, uh, and mainly I ask this out of curiosity, not because I, th I think it's a non-issue, but like, have you done much benchmarking? What is the runtime cost of carrying around these objects and checking them? Um, the, the runtime cost of the uh, compile time validation doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, so, but you, you okay. have some, you have some, you had an example where you were parsing the, the git head, the, the git stuff at runtime and it was producing a Zor. Uh, no, I, I haven't done any uh, benchmarking. Oh, okay. You had something like dot, exclamation, exclamation, dot, something else, and the result. Okay, may I ask you later? Sorry. Um, have you thought of um, uh, um, putting, say, something like um, Scala check? Uh, tests behind your predicates. Um, so some, something which you know is 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 is, is not um, um, something which is, I guess, essentially probabilistic, I suppose. But 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 maybe you have some high assurance that it's um, it's going to be true. So what I can do is um, you can get or, um, you can give the library um, a refine type and get back an arbitrary instance, but uh, that's not what you're... Um, okay. So looking at this, like one thing that seems like it would be really interesting to be able to do with something like this is often, you know, you come in with a string, you get it from somewhere, and, uh, you know, you, you have kind of a, the sort of XOR strategy, but what if you actually could do an expression where you actually do a predicate test, and then in one branch you're given a refined type where the predicate was true, and then the other branch of the if you're given the predicate where it was false, right? So you could sort of say, I have a string, either it is valid, you know, MD5, or it's like not valid MD5, and then you essentially get refinement types in both sides, and now you've sort of, because you, you, you could imagine situations where I'm trying to cover like eight cases or something, and I want to prove that essentially ad hoc pattern matching, like I've got these four cases up here and these four down here, and then it kind of narrows down. Is that something you've ever thought about or like worked on or anything? Is that, do you think that's feasible? Uh, possible, of course. Um, I haven't worked, uh, worked on that, um, but it's totally doable. Should try that. <laughs> More questions? 
Well, if not, then thanks to the speaker. <laughs>